Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm very pleased to be invited um, this afternoon to uh, talk to you and share our learning and insights, really, um, into uh, evaluating integrated care for older people in Europe, um, specifically by talking um, about a project called Sustain. Um, have we got the slides? There we go. Just wait to, to have full screen and then. Perfect, thank you. Um, so as I was saying, um, this is about sharing um, insights really into evaluation of integrated care in shifting contexts. Um, uh, next slide, please. So the project was called SUSTAIN, um, which stands for Sustainable Tailored Integrated Care for Older People in Europe. Um, the project was, has now finished. It was carried out between um, 2015 and 2019. Um, and there was by 13 partners in what's actually nine European um, countries. It was a Horizon 2020 funded project. Um, and the overall aim was to improve integrated care for older people living at home um, and to maximize the potential for knowledge transfer and application of, of um, how to implement and evaluate it in, integrated care across Europe. Next slide, please. So this is the, uh, the SUSTAIN uh, consortium. So it was carried out by a multidisciplinary um, team of 13 members, as I said, from nine uh, EU countries. Uh, so that was Austria, Belgium, Estonia, Germany, Ireland, the Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and the United Kingdom. And the project was coordinated um, by VU University Medical Center in Amsterdam um, in collaboration with the Dutch National Institute for Public Health and the Environment. Next slide, please. So just to set the scene a little, um, and I'm sure what, what I'll say next is, is not, um, uh, wouldn't be new to you, but due to population aging, health systems face the challenge of offering care and support to an increasing number of older people. Many people, of course, age in good health and remain active participants in society throughout their lives. But still, there is a high prevalence of frailty, multimorbidity, and disability, which increases with age. And this eventually leads, of course, to multiple health and social care needs. And complex needs require involvement of a large number of health and social care professionals, from family doctors, nurses, both working in primary care, community care, therapists, social, um, social workers, and other medical specialties. And there is often insufficient alignment between the different professionals and healthcare and social care providers thus often fail to address um, the integral healthcare demands on the system. So health systems for older people are frequently um, poorly planned and coordinated. And as a result, these complex needs for individuals are commonly not um, sufficiently met. And as a result of this poorly planned and um, uh, lack of coordinated care, people with multiple health and social care needs um, receive care that can often be fragmented, incomplete, inefficient and ineffective. And that has significant outcomes, um, negative outcomes. So this can lead to, for example, uh, increased uh, unnecessary hospitalizations for older people, increased use of emergency facilities, polypharmacy or multiple um, uh, drugs, uh, adverse drug effects, of course, as a result of that, duplication of tests, conflicting advice from different professionals, and overall poor quality of life. So and as a result of that, older people are disproportionately heavy users of health, of high intensity, high cost health and social care, such as hospital care, and other forms of institutional care, put, which puts pressure on health budgets. Next slide, please. So why integrated care? So as I've just mentioned, population aging, the ec economic crisis, not to mention the COVID pandemic, 
have all put increasing pressure on European health systems. Sustainable health systems which address both health and social care needs are necessary to optimally support older people so that they remain active participants in society, in society for as long as possible. Whilst also, of course, restricting and constraining healthcare resources. So integrated care is widely acknowledged to be the way forward in care delivery to support this vision. Next slide, please. So these are the core elements of integrated care. Um, firstly, it's proactive assessment of health and social care needs. It's person-centeredness by involving older people and their informal carers in decision-making and planning their care processes. It's the involvement of professionals from multiple disciplines that collaborate with older people and their carers um, to plan and design their care. It's around coordination of care to ensure continuity of delivery and support. And the delivery of multiple interventions is part of integrated care. And they can be care related interventions, but also what we might call facilitating interventions such as shared IT systems. Next slide, please. Integrated care, of course, is not without significant challenges. Um, and although integrated care is being rolled out um, and many of the infrastructures are in place in, some, in, in many areas, um, we, there is still improvements that need to be made to um, the services that are being delivered. There are many diverse models and initiatives of integrated care. The evidence of the effectiveness can be inconclusive. Um, there is little knowledge of successful implementation, although I would say that is developing um, a pace. And there is little knowledge on how to transfer successful initiatives to other regions and health systems, what we might call scale and spread. Next slide, please. So back to sustain, uh, the European Commission called for proposals to develop new models or to improve existing models of care to move towards care which is more person-centered and um, prevention orientated, efficient and safe. And by person-centeredness, we mean care that involves older people and their informal carers in decision making and planning their care processes in order to tailor the delivery of care and support as much as possible to individual needs, preferences and capabilities, taking into account, of course, diverse socio-demographic -demo groups, different cultural backgrounds and gender differences. Another core um, element uh, of integrated care is prevention orientation. So this is the prevention and promotion of health and well-being of older people with multiple needs by preventing deterioration in existing conditions and providing active support to help someone to maintain and regain as much autonomy, independence and resilience as possible in, and to make optimal use of individual resources. Safety is the prevention of adverse outcomes of care, and I've already mentioned some of those, such as drug-related problems, unnecessary hospitalizations, admissions, and falls, for example. And efficiency is about finding more efficient ways of working to avoid duplication of services. Um, and it involves consideration of uh, staff and workforce issues, overhead costs, infrastructure, and equipment. Next slide, please. So thinking of the evaluation of, of SUSTAIN then, um, so far, our, our, so our approach to the evaluation has had a number of core domains. Firstly, it's about the utilization of theoretical models and scientific evidence on integrated care that are contextualized within, with local stakeholders to design tailored sets of improvements um, at 14 of our existing case sites. So that was our approach. And we use the evidence integration triangle here as our, uh, as our uh, overarching um, theoretical basis. So as well as the use of theoretical models, there's also um, the translation um, of knowledge and experiences um, into something that is usable for policymakers, decision makers, 
um, who were tasked with designing, establishing and maintaining systems of integrated care that focus on older people with multiple needs. Um, and Sustain, we developed a uh, what's called a roadmap, um, which is an online tool, uh, which we hope is, is widely accessible across Europe, um, which can be used in different contexts and settings that policymakers and decision makers um, can use um, to help improve and implement integrated care initiatives. So our evidence integration triangle, um, according to Glasgow, has three kind of elements. First, the intervention itself. So for us, these were set, tailored sets of improvement to be implemented at integrated care initiatives over an 18 month period at our case study sites. Crucially, it involves participatory implementation processes. So this was the collaboration of sustained researchers and partners with local key stakeholders attached to our um, 14 case study sites. Uh, and that's where we designed and implemented the tailored sets of improvement for integrated care. And the evidence integration triangle talks about practical measures. Um, so for, for sustain, that was a core set of um, qualitative and quantitative measures, along with process evaluation um, measures. And I'll talk about that in a moment. So that's the, the, the sort of overarching um, picture of um, implementation science, particularly the evidence integration triangle that we used. There's two other things that you may notice on here, one of which, of course, is the importance of feedback. So we worked with the stakeholders giving feedback on um, the design and the evaluation at all stages. Um, and crucially, it's also uh, about sensitivity to local context. Next slide, please. So the overall structure, the, the study was carried out in three phases. Firstly, um, was a, a preparatory phase. And this is where we immersed ourselves really in the case sites. Um, so each of our um, 14 case sites had a researcher or sometimes two researchers um, allocated, if you like, to that site in their own country um, so they understood the, a little bit about the policies and the context within which the integrated care initiatives were taking place. So it was about the preparation phase was about understanding and working with and engaging uh, stakeholders so that we really understood what the problems were, what the challenges were and how best to support them in terms of implementation. Phase two um, was around the design, implementation and evaluation of the integrated care initiatives, um, followed by an overarching analysis um, of experiences um, of integrated care. And finally, phase three, as I mentioned, um, was uh, this development of what we called a roadmap or a toolkit um, to try and ensure that our learning uh, was transferable and generalizable uh, across different settings and countries and contexts. Next slide, please. So essentially then, this is phase one, this was the preparation uh, stage, um, and it took six months, and I would say that it was probably the most important six months um, of the whole project. Um, it's where we first of all made contact with our, um, our case sites, so uh, we carried out initial assessments um, and we a series of engagement stakeholder workshops, so we identified projects that are in perhaps in early stages of development that we could support. We set up a steering group at each of our case sites to help manage the, 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 the implementation and evaluation. We established trusting working relationships, both between us as researchers and the, the professionals we were working with, but also um, between the professionals themselves. So where we had health and social care um, who perhaps weren't um, familiar um, with each other. So it's about getting everyone round a table um, and, and us as, as researchers at, um, facilitating that. And from that, we developed um, improvement plans um, for each case site. Often this was a flow chart. So it was a, 
and often a diagram as to what was going to happen, how it was going to happen, who was going to do it. So it was really a very practical, pragmatic um, plan um, to implement um, the integrated care initiatives. And from that, that helped us refine and develop our evaluation methods um, and the practical outcomes uh, which we were trying to measure. So I would say those six months were, were crucial, um, really, um, and really underpinned everything that followed. Next slide, please. Um, so we used an overall case study design according to Yin, but there are many others. So this involved multiple sources of, of data, both qualitative and quantitative, and included um, pro data around processes as well. So we used surveys, um, both to service users, older people themselves um, and staff. We developed a set of quantitative indicators um, across uh, sites, which I'll, I'll detail in a moment. We carried out interviews with managers at the sites um, and focus groups with groups of professionals um, and other agencies and their representatives, including um, patient and public involvement groups uh, were part of that as well. We analysed documents, both in terms of policy documents, but also care plans. And we used the, the minutes or the notes from the steering group discussions um, we taped, we audio taped those discussions and we used, um, we used the data from those steering group meetings to help us understand the process and the challenges and how those challenges, challenges were perhaps overcome. So we used that data source as well. And we carried out interviews, um, both with service users and their carers, sometimes separately, often together. So a very wide range of different, um, uh, different indicators. Next slide, please. So these are our surveys that we used. Um, we used something called the perceived control of healthcare, which we administered to our service users. That was called, the, that's the PCHC. We also used the second questionnaire, which was around person-centeredness. Um, so, this was the, so the second one you can see there, it's the P3CEQ, um, which is not easy to say, um, but it was a measure that involves and asks users around their involvement in setting goals, for example, um, their independence, how empowered they were, how care was coordinated for them and how involved they were in decision making. In order to understand um, the processes from a professional, from a um, provider point of view, and we administered the team climate in inventory, the TCI. Um, and that looks at things like whether there is a shared vision, whether um, stakeholders come together um, for task orientation and how much support they get from, an or from their organization um, for innovation and how much license they have, if you like, to be creative and, and find new ways of, of working. Next slide, please. So um, this is a very busy slide, so apologies for that, but this just gives you, if you like, a snapshot um, of the, the number of quantitative indicators we tried to measure. So, for example, we look to see whether carers had had a needs assessment. We look to see how many care plans were being shared across different professionals and organisation. We, we try to... Um, uh, find out how many users perhaps had had a medication review or had had advice on things like medication and self-management. Um, we also monitored um, uh, whether safety, we measured whether things like safety advice was given to users, so whether there was advice given on, on falls prevention, for example. And we also recorded the numbers of falls um, in that measure as well. In terms of efficiency, um, again, we, uh, we measured the, or we tried to measure the emergency hospital admissions, length of hospital stays, um, and uh, equipment costs, for example, but also um, the number of staff hours um, that were dedicated to the initiative. So how much extra work did um, uh, developing integrated care uh, create? 
Next slide, please. So this was our program of work essentially over that 18 months period. Um, we started off with the team climate in, um, inventory. So we wanted a baseline, if you like, as, as to how teams were working um, initially. And we fed that back to the steering group. Again, as in the evidence integration triangle, it's all about feeding back our learning um, with the stakeholders at every stage. We administered um, the questionnaires um, and we measured our quantitative indicators primarily through the things like care plans. We carried out our user and service, our service user and carer interviews and we looked at our documents and again from this first um, uh, point in the evaluation this is really just trying to capture how the integrated care initiatives are evolving and developing. So it's a snapshot, if you like, at two time points. From that, we fed back our results to the steering group and those involved in implementing the integrated care initiatives. Um, and for some sites that involves some tweaking of the path pathway or some adjustments that needed making where things weren't perhaps working. Um, and then we allowed that to embed and then we did a second round of data collection. So some of the same um, indicators, the surveys, we re-administered the TCI to, to see whether uh, team working had developed over the course of the implementation. And we also interviewed managers at this stage as well. And then we presented our evidence back to the case types um, in terms of what was working for them, what wasn't working. So this was still within the case, the case sites, if you like. Next slide, please. So, as you can probably appreciate, um, we had a massive amount um, of many different types of data. So how do you make sense of that? How do you make sense of that so that it's helpful and meaningful for those who are implementing integrated care for older people? But how then do you also um, uh, develop um, guidelines and recommendations that can be applied at a, at a higher policy level. Um, so again, using case study design, we first of all analysed all the data sources separately. Um, and some of that has been written up and published separately, but we analysed the data separately. Um, and then we reduced the data to a series of thematic statements. So fundamentally, this is about theomath thematic analysis from all those data sources. So we reduced the data to a set of, of um, a, a large set of thematic statements. We then reapplied those statements back to the data to say, okay, so we tested it across the, across the whole data set. So we were looking for where that would that those statements were um, uh, confirmed, but we were also looking for um, where it wasn't supported and what were the rival ex explanations. So um, that was our overall approach uh, to analysis. Next slide, please. So really what the, the purpose, what we were trying to achieve with that, um, that case study thematic analysis was looking for explanations um, as to why things were succeeding um, and why things were not succeeding. So we're trying to find out, and, and this is really the integrated care mantra, isn't it? Um, you know, what works, for whom, in what context, and with what outcomes. And that's, the, that, that's, the, the, that's what we were trying to um, unpick um, through our data sources. Next slide, please. There are, however, as you can probably guess, some key challenges um, with these methods um, of evaluating integrated care. Um, first of all, um, key was professional and stakeholder buy-in um, to both the implementation itself and the evaluation. And this was variable um, across sites. So we had better stakeholder engagement in some sites than others. And we put a lot of work into developing those relationships and that stakeholder involvement, um, but it was extremely challenging. Um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of our instrumentation, we abandoned um, the, the PCHC questionnaire at the second run. 
we were finding that for the older people, we were carrying out interviews, we were asking them to, to complete two questionnaires, some of which were repetitive, um, and it really was not appropriate, I think, is, is, is what we concluded. So we withdrew the PCHC um, questionnaire at the second round. We abandoned it, essentially. Um, care plans, where we were hoping to obtain quite a lot of our quantitative data, um, were problematic in that some sites didn't simply didn't have them, didn't use them, or if they did, um, they were variable in terms of the amount of data um, that was collected in the care plans. Um, we did get um, quite a lot from them, but um, not as much, I guess, as we hoped. Uh, there was also some outcomes which were just simply not collectible, even though we anticipated they would be from our, from our early discussions, particularly in relation to efficiency. Um, it was very difficult um, to find data around costs, um, how much um, things were costing, how that compared to previous initiatives. Um, the data simply wasn't there um, in most cases. Um, and because we wanted to, to, because we were using a case study design, um, we really wanted to find things that we could compare and that we could make generalizable. So we ended up reducing our efficiency data in that domain to very, very simple measures. We asked people really, how many more staff hours does it take to, um, to implement integrated care than it would otherwise? So we asked about staffing, um, time um, and we asked about equipment costs which again were tangible and easy to measure but that really was the, the most we could really get in relation to efficiency which was a little disappointing um, but also I think realistic in terms of what is being um, collected out there or was at that time. Next slide please. So what else did we learn? Uh, we learned that context is all important. And again, this wasn't a surprise to us. So we found that successful interventions, those that were producing good outcomes, that were working well, that were sustainable, um, was related to whether there was good leadership and management, for example, um, whether the initiatives aligned with local policies, national policies and structures, um, whether there was... Uh, trusting interprofessional relationships developed um, and often we found that where teams had worked together previously so where they had a history of working together and um, they were more successful in driving things forward but there were many other contextual factors um, that played a part at those at those case sites and we tried to again um, try we tried to articulate those in our findings Next slide, please. So I guess if there is a, a one message, and there are a few more in a moment, but what was important was using this test and learn approach. So we used this test and learn approach, um, which meant we were uh, able to adapt our indicators. Um, so for example, we, we, um, uh, we stopped using one of our questionnaires. Um, we also adjusted our recruitment targets for some sites where the initiatives were perhaps a bit slower to get going or didn't have the same numbers as, as other sites, so we had to make adjustments there. And we learned how to carry out complex case study um, design and analysis. Um, and I think it's probably, um, I think it's fair to say one of the few studies that has attempted this complexity on such a scale across the range of countries we did. So we were very much kind of, I think, in the vanguard um, of, uh, of learning how do you use case study design and analysis to tell us um, things that are meaningful for integrated care. And we reflected on the researcher role throughout here. Um, for some researchers, um, they were very much more kind of backseat, for, um, but tried to be facilitators. Um, for, for others of us, we were perhaps a lot more immersed in the case studies. Um, so I think there was a little kind of blurring a little bit between the researcher and the, and the team. Um, I myself um, am a nurse by background, um, and the case study I was working with was a primary care site. 
looking at implementing proactive care for older people in, um, in the UK, in one particular part of the UK. Um, so I was <laughs> probably one of the most immersed in that, those kind of case studies um, compared to others. But we were reflecting on this um, as we would in all good qualitative research, I think, in terms of what were our biases? Where were we coming from? What did we add? Um, so we were able to reflect on that as well. Next slide, please. So finally to phase three, we produced our main product, um, the aim of which was to make knowledge transferable. Um, so we developed this roadmap for policymakers and decision makers who are tasked with designing, establishing and maintaining integrated care systems. So this involved, uh, I think they made, next slide please. Yeah, next slide. Oh, don't you just hate this? Keep going. <laughs> Lovely, thank you. Um, so we, 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 in our roadmap, we talked about good practices. What does good practice look like? What are the tools that can be used? What are some of the solutions to overcome some of the implementation challenges? And what are our tips and tricks and recommendations? So they all found their way into our online roadmap. Next slide, please. So finally, some... Uh, I guess a few key lessons learned and recommendations about how to evaluate um, complex interventions in an integrated care world. And firstly, um, we would advocate a participatory approach to evaluations design. Um, and we set this within um, the uh, implementation science or implementation research paradigm. And this recognizes the dy dynamic nature of integrated care realizing that it ebbs and it flows and it changes. Integration, um, like all, I think, service uh, initiatives, doesn't take place in a black box, doesn't take place um, uh, where you, you can't isolate it from its surrounding influences and contexts and cultures. So you have to work with that rather than trying to, to reduce it, which is why clearly things like randomized control trials, et cetera, would just not be inappropriate. So implementation science allowed us to look at the outcomes of, of integrated care, but crucially the process. Um, as well, which was important. So it's this, uh, this approach was strengthened the evaluation approach and allowed greater potential for knowledge transfer. Case study design proved to be highly useful um, and was adaptable to the changes in evaluation requirements as we went along, was um, uh, attuned to the variations between sites um, and it was very useful and pertinent for cross European or comparative research. Next slide, please. Um, there is a clear need to employ innovative data collection techniques um, when trying to evaluate services for older people, particularly frail older people with complex needs. Um, so we need to kind of go beyond or think more creatively um, and step aside from traditional surveys, questionnaire, perhaps interview approaches and towards methods that are more interactive, engaging and experiential and take account of, um, of the person's age sometimes. Um, and we're looking at new ways of doing this in, in, in future projects, one of which is around um, something called talking mats, where you give older people pictures of say a hospital or uh, a doctor and you ask them to, to share their thoughts on that particular area. So there are other ways. And I think the fact that we had to abandon one of our questionnaires, um, I think led us to realize that we need more creative ways of evaluating integrated care for older people. And further research is needed to better understand and measure the relationship between resource and cost changes in integrated care. Um, and there needs to be a shift towards more realistic and pragmatic perspective of what can be measured in terms of costs. Um, uh, and that I think was one, of our, was one of our challenges. Next slide, please. So um, thank you for listening. Um, this is the Sustain website. This is where you'll find, for example, more detail on all our case sites um, and also the roadmap. 
Um, so, and, and of course, happy for you to contact me um, outside of, of today if you have any questions, comments, or anything else you would like me to share. Thank you.